Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is for the week of February 26th through March 4th. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. If there is anything that you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. Uh, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I'm providing, okay? Remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that, we've got the Sun card. That's a beautiful card, very positive, very optimistic card. Now, let's lay out the rest of our Dove and Serpent spread so we can kind of see what else is going on. What is the context for this solar energy, this sun card, this really beautiful success and happiness and confidence um, that I think you're kind of all about this week, all right? Let's do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. And remember, we're not going to look at this until the very end of the reading, and hopefully this is the card that is going to, I think there's two there, this is the card that's going to tie everything together and, you know, give us the confirmation that we need at the very end. So you do have to stick around till the end of the video. Now, we have some major arcana, we've got that sun card, we've got some other majors, we've got some earth, some air, some water, a little bit of fire, we've got some more earth and air, we've got some more majors. It seems pretty balanced. Um, I think that you've got a really nice balance to your energy. I think that you are probably feeling like things are going well for you. I think you feel like you're, um, you're very confident this week. You know, it feels like you're very much in harmony with the, the elements around you. And that's kind of what we see with this sun energy, okay? This is a real, real confidence. This is um, <clears throat> like you've, you've um, just woken up feeling energized, you know? I think that you have a real health and vitality to you this week. I think you're generally a person who focuses on health and well-being, you know? I think that you're very in tune with how you feel, uh, both physically and mentally, emotionally. Okay, because we do see some kind of mental and emotional, um, not issues, but circumstances with you this week, right? And I think that you're very much aware of how you're feeling, um, the things that are going on, the way that your emotions are shifting or changing. Um, and so I think you have a very conscious effort toward wellness, right? Towards wholeness and towards your overall well-being, okay? I think that you're a very confident person most of the time. I think that you have a very kind of optimistic and cheerful outlook about things, at least this week. And I think this week, this is really what's gonna be uh, required of you because I think there are a lot of things going on in your life that kind of necessitate you keeping it together. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that you have a very, a very high skill level at this, right? I think it's something that you're used to, that you know how to do. And this is about maintaining that equilibrium, right? The pressures from outside can't overcome the strength that you have inside, right? And that's the nature of, of a star such as this. The reason it can continue burning and shining and, and glowing and radiating is because there's that equalization of pressure, right? The... Uh, the strength that it has internally is enough to balance the kind of, you know, the weight from outside, the gravity of itself, really, that's trying to kind of crush the star, right? I'm not an astronomer, but um, I think that's kind of how it works. Uh, so this is, is kind of a, a symbol of your life right now. I think you are very capable of withstanding the pressures from outside, right? Not only the pressures from outside as far as external events, but the, the pressure that you also put on yourself, okay? And I think that's a big part of it this week is the, uh, the expectations that you have for you, the pressure that you're putting on yourself, the demands that you're making of yourself. I think you're in a very healthy place right now, like I said, physically, mentally, and emotionally, so that you can put these tremendous demands and expectations and pressures on yourself, right? Because you can handle it right now. But I think there is a point where that might become overwhelming, and that's, I think, what we have to look out for, 
you know, I think you maybe have the tendency to put, um, you know, let's say too much, too much pressure on yourself, you know, to where it, um, you know, it, it could get overwhelming at some times. Um, I think that you are definitely an optimist. Uh, you're definitely someone who is generous with their warmth and with their energy. You know, I think that people tend to just kind of feel better in your presence, uh, almost like, you know, a, a warm summer day. You know, no one likes it to be too hot out, but when the temperature is just right, when it's just warm enough to be kind of comforting, you know, that's like the sweet spot. And I think people feel that with you. I think it really is, um, you have this kind of almost magnetic personality. You know what I mean? But it's just like you have, you're in that sweet spot. You have that perfect balance, that perfect equilibrium. Again, most of the time. Because I think there is a tendency to shift into some of these other energies, which we see surrounding this sun card. We have a lot of different energies, right? We've got the water. We've got some air. We've got some earth. We have some major arcana here at the top in the, in the form of this tower energy, which is a martial energy. It's kind of a fire energy. So really, you have these four elements that are kind of balancing you. So if you if you look at the overhead camera, you can see what I'm talking about. It's the central sun. You have this inner strength, this fortitude, this resolve, this confidence, this vitality, this power, whatever you want to call it. And you're able to resist all of these pressures coming from outside in the form of these elements, right? And we have very heavy elements here. This is the Ten of Cups, the Eight of Swords, the Eight of Discs, and then this Tower Energy. So it's like the, the, the forces coming from outside, and these are also the demands that you put on yourself, these are really trying to squish you, okay? But you have such, um, such power, such resolve and confidence that you're able to withstand this, okay? So I think that this is a very important card for you uh, this week. I think that this is also representing... Um, I think in a large part, this physical transformation that you've gone through, I think that you have maybe used all of the pressures, right, to kind of create your own diamond, so to speak, okay? Um, I think that you've been taking all of the maybe rather tumultuous or trying or difficult situations around you in your life, in your environment, and I think you've been putting them to good use. I think you've been using them as fuel, as motivation. Uh, I think that you've had a particular focus on your physical well-being lately, okay? And I think that is primarily in response to some of these outside pressures, okay? Now, what I think is really taking place has to do with this air sign person. This is the queen of swords here. Now, I don't think this is necessarily a symbol of your energy. I know we're talking to Aquarius. Aquarius is an air sign, um, despite what might be a rather popular belief, it is an air sign. Um, I think that you are dealing with another air sign person, but perhaps um, maybe a Gemini. I'm kind of getting a Gemini feeling here. Uh, but I think that there's just, I don't know if this is a friend, I feel like there's kind of a romantic component with this air sign person in your life, okay? I feel like they may be giving you some kind of mixed signals or not necessarily even mixed signals, but they'll just be kind of hot and cold. You know, they'll be on one day, kind of off the next. One day they'll be kind of just blowing up your, your inbox. Um, the next day you won't really hear from them. And that's kind of the, a bit of the Gemini vibe, right? It's kind of just on and off, hot and cold. I feel like there is a romantic component here. I don't know if this is an ex, if this is someone that you're in a relationship with currently. I kind of feel it's a current thing. Kind of feel like it's a current thing. Um, there may be a D name in there. I'm getting kind of I'm getting the 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 D sound. Um, but I feel like the situation's kind of gotten like they've gotten too comfortable. You know what I mean? They almost feel like. Um, they don't have to they don't have to treat you the same way now as they did before does that make sense i'm getting this feeling like this person's been around for a while and they've kind of just gotten comfortable with you almost too familiar where they feel they could just kind of 
what's the expression, just let it all hang out and not really care. It's like they don't, I feel like they don't really have to keep it together. They can be back and forth, they can be hot and cold, on and off, up and down, and they're not really being too considerate of how they come across to you, okay? So I think this is pretty much just one component of your life that is causing some of this pressure, some of this like external force, and it could really be affecting the demands that you're putting on yourself, right? There could be this idea that you are in some way doing something wrong in this situation, this relationship, which again, I think is romantic. Now, this isn't going to be a romance reading, okay? This reading is about you and how you're handling your energies and what energies are uh, kind of surrounding you this week, like we see on the path of the dove. But I think the relationship with this air sign person, maybe this D name, maybe this Gemini person, is a, a pretty big factor in what's affecting you, okay? The recent past, we have this 10 of cups. Now, this is kind of telling me that it um, it's a situation that has gotten too comfortable, too familiar. There's too much, right? And I think it could be even that you... Uh, are spending too much time with this person. Okay, we got the, the Ten of Cups. There's really not much more that can be learned or felt or expressed in this situation, you know? And that's kind of the feeling where there's, there's too much comfort now, that there's not, maybe there's not the excitement, maybe there is um, just no more progress. It almost feels like an idleness, you know, where we've got, all 10 of these cups, it's almost like you're as full, you've eaten as much as you could eat, and you're really not hungry anymore. But this thing is still, it's still there. You're still sitting at the table, right? But you really just don't feel like eating anymore. You're stuffed, okay? So I think this feeling of over-familiarity or being too comfortable with someone, I think that might be on both sides here both sides of the aisle. I think you're feeling that way. I think perhaps they're feeling that way too. Um, it's possible that the two of you met or this relationship is some way involving food. I know it was just kind of a, of a metaphor, but I feel like there might be actually some kind of food service involved. Maybe the two of you work together, you have a restaurant together, or um, it seems like food or cooking is kind of a central activity for some reason. I don't know if that's resonating with you or if that is just something separate in your life. Maybe you work in the food industry or you're a chef or a cook. Um, or, you know, that you work in the restaurant or hospitality industry in some way. And I don't know if that is necessarily involving this relationship, this air sign person. But I feel like you have a lot of pressure coming from that, from, some, from food in some way, okay? Um, but I feel like there's just, it, things have gotten too comfortable, at least in this relationship, okay? Now, beneath the surface, we've got this air energy that is building pressure around you, right? This is just kind of one more, um, one more force that is kind of leaning against you. And this is basically a self-imposed mental prison, right? I think that um, you are the type of person that likes to be in their head. I think you, you overthink things sometimes, okay? And I, we all do that. I think that there's the, the risk, at least, because this card is underneath the surface, it's beneath everything. There's this tendency in you to uh, be so in your head and so kind of overly analytical about things that you might actually not be making any progress with something. You know, you're thinking about this so much that you're not making any decisions. You're not taking any action. Okay, this is all talk, no walk. All thought, no action. Okay. And I think that this is probably still related to this relationship, this either potential relationship or this current relationship. Um, and I think there's just a lot of kind of indecision with you. I think that um, with all of this kind of worry, 
all of this tension, all of this pressure, I think it has the tendency to keep you kind of locked up and frozen, okay? The good thing is we have this sun card in the middle. So I feel like you're going to be making decisions, you're gonna be taking action, you're not going to be subject to the negative aspects of these cards, okay? So the negative aspect, obviously, of the Eight of Swords is to be so locked up in our thoughts, in our mind, that we're not making decisions and we're not taking action, okay? I think you need to beware of the potential for that, even though you have this solar energy, you have this sun card, which um, in most circumstances is enough to balance these other forces, right? So you're still kind of running the risk of the Eight of Swords, but I don't think that it's going to affect you um, as severely as it could. And the same with the Ten of Cups, right? Whatever that pressure is that's coming from the, the food service industry or the restaurant industry or the hospitality thing, whatever the pressures are there, um, and again, that's from the recent past, so I feel like maybe you just started some kind of work in that field, or um, perhaps you just ended a relationship with an employer or a certain restaurant or a certain you know chain or whatever it is, uh, and there's, there's some pressure related to that. I think you're going to have this solar energy that's going to be able to resist that pressure and to handle it in the uh, most balanced and harmonious way. And then also, if that Ten of Cups is representing this idea of being too familiar, too comfortable with this air sign person, this, whoever this person is, whatever this relationship is, which again, I think is romantic, uh, you're going to be able to uh, see through this Ten of Cups <clears throat> and make the correct decision for you, right? You're going to be able to take action to fix this situation, whatever, whatever that may look like, okay? Whether that's uh, having a conversation and really kind of putting it all out on the table, whether that's some kind of ultimatum, whether that is you just choosing to go a different direction, um, you're going to have the, the confidence and the clarity to take care of that situation. You're not going to be just so stuffed full of food that you can't even think straight, you know what I mean? Um, you have this sun energy, which I think is, is really terrific. Now, above everything, we've got this tower energy. This is some really martial, really fiery energy. I think this is talking about your, um, your ability or your maybe your tendency again, or your desire even to just kind of blow everything up. You know, I think that you have this, um, this potential to really just destroy everything. It's almost like you get to a certain point of frustration, you just want to destroy it all. You want to just tear it all down, right? And I think that this tower energy is talking about not so much your temper, but your, um, your real drive and desire to kind of destroy things. You know, it's almost like this will to, will to destroy. Um, so I think that part of you, with this pressure coming in, you almost want to overreact, right? It's this desire to just blow up, just completely disproportionate to the circumstances. And that would be this sun, this central solar energy, um, increasing its internal press pressure so much that it just explodes, just goes supernova, right? Not really the appropriate response because it destroys the star, right? So we want the balanced, we want the proportionate response to things. We don't want to overreact, go supernova, destroy ourselves. We don't want to underreact because then we kind of yield to the gravity, the pressures around us, and we destroy ourselves, right? And that's the tower energy. We don't want to, uh, we don't want to react in the incorrect way that's going to lead to our own destruction, whether by explosion or implosion, okay? And I think there is a tendency here to want to just explode, to just go supernova on things. When we reach that point of frustration, it's just, boom, we just want to explode, you know? So I think that with this solar energy, you have the awareness of this. You have the clarity to know that even though in the moment you might want to overreact, you might feel this like bursting fire energy that just wants to tear it all down. You've got this sun here 
to shed light on things. This, that solar energy brings clarity, right? It illuminates everything so you can see really what's going on and you can remember this equilibrium that we're striving for, you know? I almost wonder if the mystery card's gonna be the uh, justice or adjustment card. Um, so your fiery nature, this maybe a, a temper, maybe a short temper. I think you, you're aware of this and you're keeping this kind of at the forefront of your mind that despite these external pressures, which again, I think are coming from career, I think you're coming from relationship, I think they're coming from your own uh, your your own tendency to overthink. Um, you've got you've got a handle on it. You've you've got the awareness of this potential, so we can kind of prevent this this tower event from happening, right? And this is at the top of the path of the dove here. Now, in the immediate future, we see this eight of pentacles. This I think is uh, slow, steady progress, right? Um, I think that it, it's still in some way, this air sign person is some way related to this 10 of cups. I feel like maybe if it, it's someone that you work with, maybe you met them uh, in a restaurant or something like that, or like the first date was in a restaurant. There's some kind of food connection with this air sign person. And that's kind of, that's bothering me because I can't really get a clear signal of what that is. But I feel like in the immediate future, things are going to progress in a more slow, steady, cautious way, okay? And I think that this is going to test your patience a little bit because you've got this impulse to just explode, to just use the force and fire and just destroy everything if you have to. Just go supernova on everything, right? Um, it's kind of that, that overreaction to the external pressures, okay? But you're gonna try to find your way here into this eight of pentacles, which is just the slow but steady release of all of your kind of fire solar energy, not in one giant supernova, but just kind of trickling out, just kind of slowly reaching for what you want in the direction that you want, you know? So I think that this is a, a gradual resolution to the issues that we're talking about. And again, with the energies here, I don't know precisely what the issues are. I feel like there's something with this air sign person and there's something with food, okay? Um, but if this is primarily about this romantic relationship, I feel like no drastic moves are gonna be made. I feel like you're gonna take it day by day. You're gonna take it very slow. Uh, maybe you're gonna pull back some of your efforts, some of your interests, some of your attention from this person, right? And just take things slow. Dial it back a few notches. You know, if the two of you are uh, just kind of idling, getting too comfortable, too familiar, this card might be talking about um, kind of going back a couple of steps, right? This might be just being a little bit quieter, being a little bit, um, you know, maybe sending a few less texts every day, maybe not seeing this person ever so often, just to uh, slow things down and to allow some of this uh, romantic energy to, to kind of um, to resurface, to, to reignite a little bit, right? Just to kind of allow yourself to digest, right? If, the, you know, we're using the food metaphor again, allow your stomach to empty and allow your food to digest a little bit so then you could be hungry again, you know? So this is telling me that it's just a slow and steady and rather cautious um, movement forward, okay? Now, if this is still talking about your experience in the food service industry or the hospitality industry, if this has a career or job component, uh, then this is definitely a card talking about moving slowly into this career field, okay? So if you're looking for a job now, I think that you have to be very discerning. I think you shouldn't jump at the first opportunity presented to you. I almost feel like you need to kind of hold out um, for the exact perfect position, opportunity, um, 
you got to find the, the right entrance to where you, you truly want to go. Okay. Um, I wish we had a little bit more water energy here because I feel like there's just a little bit of a, a lack of direction or purpose. You know what I mean? We see a little bit of water here, and that's pretty much it with the ten, the ten of cups. And that ten of cups is not telling me that you, you have this sense of connection and purpose and meaning in your life, right? I feel like this week, it's not so much about pursuing your goal, your purpose, your will, right? I feel like it's more about trying to maintain this equal equilibrium, trying to resist these pressures, trying to resist these other elements, you know? Um, cause I feel like we need to kind of do like a deep dive into ourselves to really find out what we are trying to grow. What is this tree that you're trying to, to really grow? What is the fruit that you're looking for at the end, right? What does success mean to you? What is the purpose? What is the meaning for all of this? Because with the energies that we have on the path of the dove, it feels like you're just kind of existing. You're trying to maintain, you know what I mean? You're trying to keep your balance keep your harmony, um, not implode, not go supernova. You're just, you're trying to just survive, right? The Eight of Pentacles is talking about finding that avenue that we can just, that one little corridor, that one crack in this situation that we could just slide through to find our way, right? To find what is our path, right? Because I feel like there's a lot going on, but I don't feel like you're really moving in any particular direction. I feel like you have to, um, you know, maybe you've been exploring different things, different avenues for your life, right? And that could be, again, why we're feeling a little bit fed up or a little bit too full of things right now, because there's just so much going on. And what you're looking for is just that one little crack, that one little path that you can just kind of ease into with this Eight of Pentacles and find, find your way, right? And not in this explosive, hectic, crazy kind of way, not in this overwhelming way, but in a way that feels really calm and peaceful and natural, right? And that's the Eight of Pentacles here. So this is saying again that it, it's about testing different things to see what really works for you, right? It's about testing this little crack over here to see if you can um, just kind of ease into that. Or, um, you know, just peeking behind different doors to see what really resonates with you, you know? It's looking at the details, looking at things slowly, calmly, carefully to find out where you really want to go, okay? And if this this is applying to this romantic relationship, if this is the case with this air sign person, uh, if this is something related to um, maybe your previous career in food service or hospitality, maybe you, maybe you were in that industry and you've had enough of that, you know, maybe you had too much and you're looking for something else. You're looking for different, um, different doors, different paths, different uh, fruit to kind of sample to see what you really like, what you want to do, you know? Let's move over to the path of the serpent now. This, this reading is um, a little bit veiled to me. I, I don't see a very clear direction, and that's kind of what, why I was saying that. I don't feel like you really have a clear idea of, of what you're doing, what you want to do, right? Um, because I'm kind of getting a sense like I can't really get a super clear vision of the meaning of all of these cards. Now, I do just want to say that these cards are always correct, okay? The problem is not with the cards that we have. It's my problem as the interpreter that I don't quite know how to associate each of these cards to your exact circumstances. And that's why I ask you to use your own intuition, right? Connect directly with these cards yourself and go beyond the details that, that I'm providing, okay? Now, Path of the Serpent. We've got an Eight of Wands. You are someone who um, has a lot of that fiery energy. You know, we said with that tower energy that you are, you are always kind of this close to just going supernova and just like blowing up the whole thing. And that would at least give you this fresh start, right? It would, it would at least take care of all of this pressure. You would feel the relief, the release 
you know, but I think you'd be destroying yourself. You'd be destroying everything that you've already built. All of the work that you've already done uh, would all be for naught if you went supernova and just destroyed everything, right? So I think what you have now is worth keeping, but it needs to be, it needs to be slowed down. It needs to be done a little bit carefully. You need to, to pay attention to the details, right? I think the larger picture will take shape but we just need to pay attention to the details. And that's kind of how I feel about this reading, right? I'm not getting a sense of the bigger picture here, but we're looking at all these little details and I think by the end it'll come together, right? I think with this mystery card, we uh, maybe will really get a larger sense of what's going on. So I, I wonder if this is gonna be some water energy with that mystery card. You know, I feel like we need a, a nice kind of refreshing uh, bath or something. You know, we need to just immerse ourselves in the water, which I think, one, will put out some of this fire energy, will give us the, um, the kind of cleansing that we need to see things from that clear perspective. Because this sun energy now, you know, I'm talking about the clarity of the sun. I'm talking about the confidence and the equilibrium and the balance. Yes, I think you're, you have all of those things and you're resisting all of these pressures from outside, the pressures that you're putting on yourself. Uh, it could be that you have, um, it, it could be that you have pressure from your family as well, because maybe this isn't a romantic situation. Maybe this is a, a family situation because this Empress card over here, and I know we have yet to get to the Eight of Wands, but we've got this Empress here. So this could be talking about a family member, a maternal figure perhaps. Okay. I thought maybe this is romantic with this uh, air sign person, maybe this Gemini person, but it could be that this is a, a parental figure, right? Putting pressure on you, you know, direct pressure. I think you have enough pressure around you and then you're also getting the pressure really close to home, you know? And this is either that romantic partner or that family member, someone very close to you that's putting this pressure on you too, okay? It's like you didn't have enough going on with these four elements around you. You've gotta have someone right next to you also putting pressure on you, okay? And I think that's what the Sun card is working to, to resist um, this week. You know, and that's why I think we're not getting a clear vision of our future or of what we really want because we're just in this survival mode where we're trying to resist the pressure. We're trying to just not implode. And at the same time, you're trying not to explode and go supernova, which is kind of what we see here too. This is some, this is the short temperedness, right? The tower energy is kind of the result what would the effects be of your short temperedness? Okay. But the eight of wands is talking about really quick, direct bursts of energy, you know, and I think this could maybe come out sometimes as you like lashing out at people, you know, or with all of this pressure, sometimes you just need a little, a little, uh, release valve, right? So just these short bursts of fiery energy so that you don't go supernova right? And this could be sometimes snapping at people, right? Sometimes being a little irritable, sometimes being a little bit um, just, uh, you know, micro aggressive in some ways, you know what I mean? Just small ways that just kind of release a little bit of this fiery frustration so that you don't go supernova, right? This is that, that release valve. So it prevents the overpressurization, Right, so a little bit is vented at a time, okay? What we need is a full immersion in that water, I think, to take care of all of this, right? Um, but we don't have that here. I, the mystery card's definitely gonna be water. I can feel that for sure. Now, the next card we talked about a little bit, this is the Empress energy. This is telling me that uh, there's this D named person, could be a Gemini person, but an air sign, I think. They're putting pressure on you as well. Okay. And this could be from a romantic partner, it could be from your family, it could be a maternal figure. Um, and this is the, that pressure that's coming from really close to home. So you have these pressures from, from your life circumstances, from yourself. And then this person who is supposed to be there to love us and support us, they're putting pressure on you too. So I don't know if they're pressuring you 
in a romantic relationship, if they're pressuring you as part of the family, like, you know, pushing you into certain um, traditional uh, roles in life or careers or pressuring you about your education or anything like that, right? I don't know exactly, but I feel like the pressure is building up and what you really need is this escape that we see in the immediate future. And this is the slow, diligent, careful, thoughtful, um, planning, experimenting, really figuring it out, really nurturing yourself so that you can find the right life path for you. This can't be done hastily. With all of this pressure, you may make a snap decision. You may react quickly and impulsively, and it's going to be the wrong decision. You're not going to be happy. You need everyone to basically shut up, let you take care of it in a calm, careful, relaxed way and a way that you can really reflect about what you want. You need to really do a deep dive into yourself to figure out what it is that you want and what you need and where you're going. All of these pressures are, are not going to force you to make the right decision, right? That needs to come from you. The next card is, uh, well, this is the right decision. This is you having that knowledge, that clarity, that divine insight, that aha moment. It's in the position of your fears, worries, and concerns. So I think that you fully recognize that with all of this pressure going on, with everything going on around you, it's going to be pretty much impossible for you to ever achieve this kind of enlightenment. Now, we're not necessarily talking about spiritual enlightenment, right? We're talking about the enlightenment in a very practical, real-world sense. You're, you're searching for enlightenment about your path. And I think spiritual enlightenment has its counterpart in this kind of, you know, earthy enlightenment, too. You know, I think we need both. So you need to find that path in life that is uniquely yours. And that needs to be discovered outside of all of this pressure. Okay, we keep talking about pressure because I think it's coming from everywhere, all sides of you. This is what we're really after. The, the fear is that we're not going to ever find this because of the environment that we're in now. But what I see next on the path of the serpent is the two of pentacles. This is change. This is really telling me that you need to use this solar energy to make some changes, to uh, figure out what you need to do differently, how you can kind of rearrange your life in whatever way you have power over, okay? Uh, in order to get yourself to this Eight of Pentacles so that you can achieve the Ace of Swords, okay? So whatever in your environment you have the power to change, change it. Rearrange things. Uh, change the way you interact with people. Change the people in your life. Change whatever is, is available to you to change. Whatever you have the power to do. You know, there are a lot of things in life that we cannot change. Yeah. And I'm really thinking this mystery card is going to be something like the hanged man. We need that water right? We need that surrender, almost that acceptance. Both to, we need the power with the sun energy to change what we can change. But we also need the acceptance to, um, to be kind of at peace with those things that we can't change and to somehow escape from the pressures of those things, right? It's almost like when we when we accept the situation, it no longer feels like such pressure because there's just like, we can't do anything. We can't change it. So there's nothing to struggle against, right? It's almost a surrendering to that pressure, but in, in a positive way. Does that make sense? I think I read that in a book um, about how helplessness or acceptance of the futility of a situation gives us freedom from that situation, right? If we can't change it, we accept it, it almost frees us from it, okay? Two of Pentacles, change. Change what you can in your environment, accept what you cannot change. I want this mystery card. I, I'm really feeling hanged man here. Um, for all of those reasons that we just talked about, but let's see, let's see what our confirmation is. Yeah, hanged man energy. 
So this is everything we just said, accepting the things that we can't change and using that as a way to get out from underneath all of this pressure. You know, we accept it and then we are free from it. And this is also kind of about changing perspectives too. This is about um, looking at things from different points of view. Uh, and that might help you to see these eight pentacles and begin to explore the different life paths, be able to kind of see things from a different angle as part of the acceptance of the situation. And then maybe you will free yourself from some of this pressure. This is also really diving deeply into your own soul, your own emotions, feelings, intuition, your own spirituality to try to find this ace of swords. This is like, uh, what is it? Excalibur, right? That was found in the Lady of the Lake, right? In the water. You got to dive deep down into that water to find that sword, that ace of swords. And I think that, um, you know, this is going to wash away some of this pressure, some of this fiery energy that I think is kind of the focus because this tower energy is right at the top of the path of the dove, right? So that's kind of like the most conscious part of this is you just wanting to explode, right? Wanting to go supernova. And this is that cooling, cleansing water that, you know, has the potential to wash that away, okay? And give you a little bit of peace and calm, freedom, relief, release, surrender, yielding. Um, and again, with that acceptance and surrender to circumstances that are beyond your control, you're freeing yourself from that. So it's kind of like that refreshing bath that we talked about, right? And then perhaps in this bath, you can do some introspection and try to find this clarity this Ace of Swords. So I think this is a, a terrific confirmation. I think that it gives us some clarity or some idea how to proceed this week, though I know the details are still a little bit murky. It still feels a little bit veiled to me. I don't know the nature of this air sign person, if this is a romantic thing, if this is a family thing, but they're putting the pressure on you too. Okay, so I think the real the real practical uh, takeaway from this is this two of pentacles. Change what you can in your environment and accept the rest. Surrender to the rest of it. Not a surrender as in just to uh, kind of give in to the pressure or, you know, acquiesce to their demands. No, but just to accept that you can't change the circumstances. These are the things that you can't change, that you don't have power over. So we should not let them bother us. You know what I mean? As much as possible. Anyway, we're going to do an extended. If you want to stick around, click on the link that's right up here. And you can have access to all of the extended readings for all the readings that we do. Okay. This was your weekly tarot reading for February 26th through March 4th on Dove and Serpent Tarot.